I really like it and I want to share this with you as an actual tutorial lesson. I'm Stephanie, this is Deliberately Creative, and we are going to paint this sweet little magical mushroom landscape. Let's get started. I am grabbing just a standard four inch by four inch canvas panel. I'm doing these small to make them quick and easy, and it's part of my small art challenge. So if you wanna play along, check the description below for all the details. We're gonna get in here and get these paints on the palette. I am using the Turner Ac Acryl Gouache and I've got a whole bunch of colors. I'm putting out the colors for the background first. So Diosnine Violet, because it's that kind of magical mushroomy type of picture. A little bit of Prussian blue. These dry matte. They are not shiny. This was painted with that paint and see no shine. But it is shiny when it is wet. I'm going to put a little bit of magenta out. This magenta is a little bit thick. And we are going to have some green going to get some of this bright green. This is the permanent green light, a little bit of permanent green middle, which is a darker green, and a bit of white. Even though the background is fairly dark-ish, it's still got white in it, and white is sort of your magic color when it comes to uh, painting with any kind of gouache white is the magic color. If you only have watercolor and one tube of white gouache, you can make all the colors. <laughs> it might not be as saturated because as soon as you add white to it, it desaturates your colors, but it's still fun. I am going to go ahead and get my brush wet and look for my towel. There it is. I have just a plain old kitchen tea towel that has become my studio towel and I'm going to get the background just wet with a little bit of water I want the colors to kind of slip around a little bit so I heard in the last video that people really enjoyed seeing me fix the oops <laughs> thank you so much for your replies on the um, in the comments I really appreciate them I'm going to take some of this purple a little bit of the white, a little bit of the blue, and we're just going to streak down. So doing it like this on that wet background. Look at that. It's giving us that sort of feeling of there being some trees in the background, some color coming through doesn't have to be you know anything super stellar the bottom here is just going to get some paint on it <laughs> I'm not worried about making that perfect right now what I am thinking about is even though this is all wet I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of this bright green a little bit of that mid green See how I'm kind of mixing them together. And then I'll just put a tiny corner of that purple on there. And then we're just going to sort of drag it down. Now it's going to mix into these colors. Oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? Now, this is very light. So now what I want to do, since I've got color in the background, I'm going to go ahead and just clean off my brush a little bit with the paint on the base here. Actually bring that up because the background comes up. See what we're doing? We, you have to get some color on the background first. I'm going to use my heat tool and just dry this really fast. So what I'm going to do is I want to pick up some of that dark green and the light green again. And I'm going to get 
and I had a little bit of purple on here too. I want to get the sort of foreground area blocked in just a bit. So all I did was just brush some of that color along in a shape that made me happy. The, the background, this area here, kind of comes up and sort of disappears behind the mushrooms. So that's what I'm doing is I just sort of made it a lovely little background area. I am going to pull that over. I think we are going to put out a little bit of this permanent yellow deep now. Just a touch. I'm not cleaning my brush. I'm just going to pick up some of that yellow and bring it in. My brush is sideways. See how I'm, I'm kind of brushing this in sideways. Letting the tip edge of the brush sort of dictate where it's going. I'm trying to keep this a little bit looser than, um, than tight. How's that? I'm going to grab a touch of the Prussian blue and that dark green. And I want to put a bit of this darker foreground. I'm not worried about getting paint on my table. If you're interested in seeing how I clean it off, I have a little two minute video that uh, shows me scrubbing it all off using a super cheap tool and no chemicals. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I do have it all recorded and ready to go up. It might already be up. What am, who am I, who am I kidding? I get these things done and I'm like, Ooh, I want to share. So there we go. We're going to dry that. So if I wasn't doing this as a mushroom painting, this would almost be done as a, an Aurora, uh, Northern lights, um, rainbow sky. Uh, this is so pretty, a lovely, you know, it could be a faraway landscape. But we're making it into a very personal landscape, very up close. I am going to grab a Q-tip or cotton earbud, spin it in my fingers just a little bit to kind of tighten the, the cotton up. And I'm going to go over and grab a bit of white, a bit of yellow and a bit of white because I want to put some of these little uh, fairy lights into the background. I'm gonna grab a little bit of green on it too. And doing it this way, put it down and sort of spin it. It gets you that fairy light, little dots. They don't have to be perfect. They just have to be yours. None of my things are perfect. So I just want to put some of these fairy lights in. So that way, when the mushrooms go on, there's some that are magically behind them. White and yellow, touch of green here and there. If you smoosh it down farther, you get, um, heavier, thicker dots. If you twirl it, you can get your dots to end up being kind of round. And if you don't get the shape you want, you can always just mush the cotton bud. And I want it to be a little bit, these to be a little bit thicker. And there. So now we've got some fairy lights in here. I think I'm going to flip my cotton bud over, get it wet in the water and just kind of get it tightened up a little bit. And I want to grab just a tiny little dot of white. Just 
Look at that. Just tiny little dot. Using, using Q-tips, using cotton buds to do paintings. I've seen pa people do complete paintings, full on, fully painted with just cotton buds. All right, I'm gonna dry this real quick. For the mushrooms, I am going to use a little bit of burnt sienna and white to start laying in the shape of the mushrooms. Let me just put that right there. You can see that. And maybe a little bit of cadmium red. So there we go. And then I am going to grab it just, this is an old beat up Artist Loft round. Uh, the paint popped off that says what the size is. It's probably about a two, two or four. I got it wet and now I'm going to grab some of the burnt sienna and the white. If you put enough white in it, burnt sienna and white can get all the way to just a soft cream, but I'm trying to keep a little bit of color in it. Now, these mushrooms, I am just going to paint on without drawing. So this first part right here is the little mushroom that's over to the side. I did do this from the the original one I did from the reference photo that I am showing up on the screen now, but um, this one I'm painting it from my from my piece of art. Before I put the cap on, because it's easier to do right now, I'm grabbing some of the dark colors and mixing them with that burnt sienna making kind of a deep gray purple type of color. And I'm going to go in and put some shadow up here around the top and a little bit of shadow down here because there's going to be some grasses. And if you don't like the tone, you can always put more paint over it. You can always go back and just paint over it. So what I did is I just went and rinsed my brush out and now I'm softening that up because this little guy really is in the back and in the shadow. Um, he's got a, a lot darker bit right up the top that I don't want any white in. So I'm taking burnt sienna and Prussian blue and mixing those together. No white. And I'm going to go ahead and get really dark right here. And you're going, wow, that's, that's interesting. That's weird. Why would you do that? And I'm doing it because when I put the cap on, then I don't have to mess with this anymore. I'm putting my shadows in and such beforehand. And I'm going to go ahead and come over here and get the next uh, stem in. And this one is going to be the tall stem. So, and I don't mind if I'm going right over the top of things, it's okay. So this little guy is kind of tall. And if you look, this is basically sort of a rounded ended rectangle, a little bit heavier at the base than at the, the top. So yeah, this is the second time that I am painting this particular painting, but this is going to look so different than the first time I did it. And now I want to go ahead and I'm looking at the negative space. 
there's negative space here between these two mushrooms. So I want to get that negative space in. What I mean by negative space is the shape of the the shape of the space between them, between those mushrooms. I'm gonna grab some more white and burnt sienna. I'm just sort of mix that up. It doesn't have to be exactly the same shade. These have different lighting on them, different shadows. And I'm going right over the top of another one of those little fairy lights. There we go. I hope you're enjoying this. If you are, make sure to let me know by leaving a comment. And if you really like it, click the like button. I want to know where you're from. Have you painted mushrooms before? Or is this going to be your first painting? I'd love to know that too. I'm just grabbing some more white, kind of lightening it up a little bit in the front and over to the one side. So the, the original picture looks like it was taken with a flash because it's got a lot of uh, bouncy highlights running around. Now I'm going to take some of that gray that we had there. You notice I'm getting different variations of tone here just because I was picking up more white and dropping it in. That's all. I'm going to put a little bit of that gray greeny color up at the top there. I have some of that white in my brush right now, so We get those colors, we get the variations. I really love working with gouache. Gouache is my favorite, I think, of all of the mediums, uh, especially the acrylic gouache. So really, I mean, it could be, I, I could say I really like acrylic, but I don't like the real plasticky um, finish that you get. I love the matte finish that you get on the paintings with the acrylic gouache or the matte acrylic paints. They're very opaque. They're very, they're very fun. They're very forgiving. Since they are so opaque, it's easy to go back in and change things up a little bit, add a little bit more color, layer over, not worried about how the, it, I paint for the enjoyment of the, the painting. And if it turns out and it's pretty, that's a bonus, but really the, the painting, the time that I'm spending doing this, being mindful of what's going on around me or ignoring what's going on around me and focusing on the painting. This is my happy place. This is my place where I learn about what I'm thinking about because a lot of times things come up in your head that you're you're totally unaware of. Oh, I see. There's the little, little mushroom right down here in front. It's very red brown. I'm going to go ahead and put that little guy right there because I liked the look of that. So we're putting his little, little body on that. I'm going to grab a little bit of yellow, I think. Maybe a touch of cadmium red. Be 
because it's definitely a different color. Ooh, that's a nice shadow color though. So see, you pick up a color, you make it, and then you go, ooh, well, that would be a good color to move around a little bit on the, on the painting. If you put a color in one spot, your eye will automatically just go and look at that one spot. If you put the color around two or three places, then it just looks like it's part of the part of the whole composition. Now what I'm doing is adding a little bit of those sort of shadowy dots up in here. I am going to be drying this. And then we're going to put the caps on and then we'll put the the um, the bit of grass and and things like that. Actually, so before we put I'm going to dry this and then we're going to put some of the brighter green moss that's sort of sitting up here swiggled in behind and then we'll dry it again put the caps on and then put in the little bits of moss that are in front so now what I want to do is get uh, I need to spritz this there I just used a little eyeglass spritzer it's a little lens cleaner bottle and just to get this paint a little bit more wet a little bit I'm take I'm picking up green I'm picking up yellow I'm picking up the light green and we're gonna go in and just sort of squiggle the moss see just squiggling not not worried about making any specific plants or plant lines designs any of that not worried about that just I just want some of this brighter color up around here we are going to put a few fairy lights in the front so never fear there will be more fairy lights we're just putting in this squiggly loose, very loose type of background. My colors are kind of mushing together and mixing up and that's okay. I'm just kind of loosely squiggling that in. I'm going to put some of this brighter green in here now. working it down just a little bit. And some of it's not even going to show, you know, and that's okay. That's all part of this process of layering your colors and getting the, ver the variety. Just gonna move that around like that. Pull some of that down into this space right here. The light is magical on this painting. It is, reminds me of, you know, something like, something out of a fairy tale, little fairy tale story. So go with the magic, move it along, share it. Get it out there in the world. This, this just makes me happy. Painting is like magic tricks. So if anybody ever asks you, can you do magic? You say, yep, I'm a painter. Painters do magic all the time. Dr artists do magic all the time. So really, even if you don't consider yourself a painter, you're an artist. When you choose to start making art, you are an artist. So don't, don't let 
definitions of what an artist is stop you from making art because truthfully the only definition of what an artist is that matters an artist is a person who makes art and art can be anything you say it is for heaven's sake somebody or somebody taped a banana to a wall and called it art i'm going to make sure that this background is dry now we're going to go in some of the cad red and the burnt sienna touch of that white now this little cap comes down swoops up and then comes back around like a like kind of a, a shortened squiggly s and then you just link it up and look at this all that stuff in the background is getting covered so cool I'm going to grab a little bit more of this white and put it right here and then wipe off my brush grab some more of that more brown and shape this just a little bit more look at that Now I like to see how I can sculpt my mushrooms into, into shapes. So even though this little guy has that, he's got like a little cap tip. So I want to, I want to accentuate that little bit. If your brush starts getting too sticky, you either need to add more paint or wash your brush. All right, I, I, I think I'm going to cover that and I will come back and add that little swoopy bit back in. Maybe with some of that permanent yellow and a little bit of the cadmium red. and then a touch of white. So we're gonna go back in right under there. I'm working on this sort of flat, so it's, this is the part where I end up taking so much time when I'm doing these. I like that color in there, but I want to get it darker. So now I'm gonna take some of that Prussian blue, just put it in there as my darkest color. See what I mean about sculpting it a little bit? Just like that. Get a little bit of some shadow coming up the side. I want a little bit of this violet color, magenta color. I want a little bit of that getting sort of dusted in on the top. Look at that. A little bit of this yellow coming in, giving me some highlight. Yellow works to lighten colors, just like white does, except that yellow doesn't desaturate your colors as much. I mean, anytime you mix your colors together, you do desaturate them a bit, but bring that in, warm that little guy up a little bit. Now bring a bit of white in while the color is wet you can bring other colors right onto the canvas and you can start oh I think I'm gonna leave him I'm done with him I like it 
you can just start sculpting. And as what I mean by that, you're shaping it. You're putting shadows in and highlights. And you saw how I kept pushing back and forth between shadows and highlights. That's all I'm going to do on the rest of these. So we're going to take some of that brown and the yellow. So that's burnt sienna and yellow. I'm going to put this cap in. It's kind of flat on the top comes down and comes around the back of the mushroom. It gets really, really dark, but I'm using this color to sort of draw it in. It's basically a big, look at that. It's like an umbrella. Let's see, I think that's gonna come over a little bit farther. There's going to be a really dark in underneath here, but for right now, I just want to get the mushroom cap sort of settled on top. Now I need some of that Prussian blue and brown mixed together. And I know right now it looks pretty rough, doesn't it? It's okay. It can look rough. It doesn't have to be perfect the moment that you put paint down. And your paintings don't have to be perfect the first time you paint them. You know, um, don't, don't be so tied up in the finished outcome. You need to be tied up in the, what am I learning? How am I doing this? Am I pushing my colors you know, far enough? Am I putting enough contrast in? Am I, you know, those types of questions need to be answered by you. You don't need to have a perfect finished painting the first time. That's what I'm trying to say, you know? Give yourself some grace, cut yourself some slack. You don't expect a person who picks up a violin to, you know, play at the Carnegie Hall the second week that they've been playing with it, right? You don't expect somebody who has just got their learner's permit to drive to start driving um, 18 wheelers, that would be ridiculous, wouldn't it? To expect somebody to do something so outrageously beyond their, their scope of, of skill building. Every painting you do, you are building skills and it doesn't matter if you have been painting for two hours or if you've been painting for 20 years you are still building skills so this is still just me you know putting in color I'm just picking up the browns I've been mixing a little bit of blue into my browns sometimes I'll pick up a little bit of white right in my brush. I want to lighten up this edge right here just a little bit. It's kind of like that papery, papery edge. I want to extend my mushroom just a little bit over here. I'm just going to use the white to do it. But I am definitely in the camp of Keep learning, keep growing, keep exploring, be brave. Try something that you think is a little bit hard for you, but don't expect to do it perfect the first time. I have never really done any painting where I got it perfect, absolutely spot on, 
the first time, say I try a new medium, <laughs> you know, you're learning how the paint moves. You're learning how your hand moves that brush. You're learning, you know, how do these colors interact with each other? See, I keep, I keep pushing this and then pulling back and then adding more dark and then adding more light. I'm still working on trying to get the mushroom to look like it's curving over. So what I'm looking at is where's the light? Where's the shadows? How do I, how do I pull that edge down? you've made it this far thank you so much I know this is a little bit longer but I'm trying to to really step by step it for you like that see that's cool that's cool I think it needs to bump out just a little bit farther right there yep now what I want to do is grab a little bit of this white I'm going to put a little bit of light right in here. A little pocket of light right down there. So we're starting to get the, the lightness going on this. I want a little bit of that, that magenta. Because I really like the effect that that gave. Gives you that sort of pop of surprise color that you weren't expecting. You really can't see it very well on the wet paint, but you will when it's dry. You'll see it. I'm grab a little bit of white. I'm going to grab a little bit of white onto this one. So now I'm going to go back and forth between these two mushrooms. as I start getting them worked into their, into their respective scene. I'm taking some of that blue and the brown and I'm going to go in and put a little bit more dark right down here. The, like just under the cap on the stem of the second mushroom. I'm going to take and bring my color around on the big mushroom that's on the right hand side. Grab some white. I'm just going to sort of highlight that bottom edge just a tiny, tiny bit. I'm going to pull up inside the cap with that stem just a little bit. It's really very shadowy. You don't see the gills of the mushroom. But we're starting to get, we're almost there actually. Starting to get that feeling of, I'm grabbing a little bit of red and the brown. Just dance, dance the brush around a little bit. I'm trying to not be too specific. I want to have some serendipity happen here. I want it to have that magical feel. I love the magic that happens when you just let the brush do its thing. I'm gonna put a little bit of the light color over here
I want some of the dark. Now I'm not rinsing my brush out very much at all, actually. I'm gonna put shadow on that cap that's of the little mushroom behind the one on the right. So it's the one in the middle is getting that little bit more shadow. And then I'm gonna come up here and sort of mush out some of that really bright highlight that I put on there because I don't like it. Take some more of the yellow with just a touch of white. Get this brightened up here in the front. Get a little bit more water on my brush so my paint moves. Don't be afraid to put water on your brush. It's not going to hurt this paint. We're working in thin layers. We're building it up, but we're not too worried about perfection. Oh, I've got the little mushroom right down here in the very front. And it's very reddish, reddish brown. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it on. Look at that. Grab a little bit of white. Sort of mush that in. here and there don't don't worry don't worry just have fun I want it to be a little bit darker over here take a little bit of that I'm going to start putting some of those a little bit more deeper shadows but letting some of the color that's in my brush just be there Kind of like the dirt that's underneath. <sighs> yeah. Start putting some of the brown in, but I'm still, still thinking about this mushroom because it's not done yet. It's close, but it's not done yet. too much of that dark color, some, a little bit of that yellow maybe, ooh, I like that yellow, it needs to be a little bit stronger so you can see it too, so we're getting some yellow there, that, that uh, highlight that's over there is too bright. Oh, that's looking good. Right down here, pull in some of that. I'm just going back and forth between the Prussian blue, the purple, and the burnt sienna. And then a little bit of white here and there. Wiping my brush on the palette. to kind of get my colors in the way I want them. I'm bringing that, that bit of the stem up inside the mushroom a little bit higher, but I think I went a little too high. So now I'm going to take some of that, just the Prussian blue and shape it. I'm using the Prussian blue as my, basically as my black. Oh, there we go. See, that's giving us that feeling that it goes up inside even farther. The dark colors push things back. The light pulls it forward. I'm going to put a little bit of a Highlight right around here. Sort of a an edge that's that's got some lightness to it. A little 
little bit of light here and there. Put some light on here. When I say I'm putting light on, I'm just putting lighter colors. So yellows, white, kind of glaze over that just a bit. I want it to be lighter, but not quite so bright. Oop, there we go. There we go. Now we're getting to the point where I want to put some of that, that magenta on it. Yep, there we go. That's looking good. And a little bit of the white. Get some of that magical light going. I'm enjoying this a lot. And this is going way faster than the other painting did. The the first one where I I forgot to talk. I took so long. All right, I'm grabbing my Q-tip, my you know, cotton bud, putting it in yellow, putting it in white. I'm going to put a few more little fairy lights in here. They don't have to be perfect. They just, they just need to be on there. You know, they don't have to be perfect. Just put them on. Just getting some more color. I want to put, whoops, there's a little bit of the hair of the cotton sticking out funny there. Just get some, get some sort of randomy blobs of, of light. The fairy lights. Okay, that's good right down here we're going to we're just going to put in a bit of the a little bit of the brown now with some of the green the dark the the mid green and I'm just going to start putting some of the grass on and I'm being sort of haphazard and just sort of mush it on the nice thing about having that background color already dark is that when this gets to the point that you like it, you can stop. You don't have to worry about, do I have enough paint on to cover everything? Because you already do. So looking at that and going, I want a bit more. Need a little bit more water on that. If you want your lines to be, you know, flickable, they need to, the paint needs to be wet enough. And you learn how wet that is by, by your practicing. My brush is sort of splitting apart a little bit. It's not it's not a tight, you know, tight bundle. It's not giving me a perfect line. This is an old ratty brush. And sometimes the rattier brushes give you more fun lines. than your, you know, perfect, super expensive brushes. This is, like I said, this is an art, uh, round artist loft, came in a packet of a whole boatload of, of brushes. So just putting some of the dirt in. I 
want to get a few of these maybe kind of like sticks or grass I'm just picking up all the colors you'll you'll find the sweet spot where you have enough paint on your brush and where you have enough variety of paint on your brush and you have enough moisture in the paint on your brush that you can start layering your colors in and getting getting the effect that you want. I am just about done. Just putting a few more little little more a few more little bits of grass and bits of dirt. Ooh, maybe a little bit more blue on that. Make it almost a dark brownie. Oh yeah, see? Let's just put some dirt in there. You can do it. You can make this work out to be exactly the way you want it to be. It all depends on how much time you spend. I think I like that. I'm going to, the, the mushrooms themselves are just a little bit too, too bright. So I'm going to grab some of that brown, a little bit of the blue, more brown. touch of white so see just just putting a little bit of some texture on here so it doesn't look quite so spotlight I want to Bring that back just a little bit on the cap. See? Just bringing it back, just playing with it. It's a push and a pull. Adjust that, that mushroom cap just a little bit. While it's wet, you can move your paint around and blend it right on the canvas. Bit of that magenta just mix it right in with that brown and yellow there oh that's starting to feel better and that's I mean really and truly this type of painting this is what makes me so happy being able to get in here and just add those little extra things extra touches of contrast just create so much more drama that really is the thing that creates the creates the effect of it feeling like it's someplace real is that you've got enough contrast if you don't put enough contrast in it just looks flat. So get your contrast, pump it up. Pump it up. Sounds like a, a 80s and 90s um, jazzercise or something, right? Pump it up. Oh, that's pretty. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put, I'm going to do it. 
I am going to put a little bit of some light, soften it in, just right on the cap, like that, soften it in. And I do want a touch of that magenta with a little bit of light on the brush. A little bit more light, a little bit more light, a little more white. A touch of water, not that much. Mushrooms can have that sort of powdery, soft. powdery soft tone to them. They reflect colors in an interesting way too. I'm not trying to create pink, so. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. Needs a little bit more light right over here. He needs a little more variation in tone. And you, you learn that as you practice, as you play. So there we go. All right. I think I want to put a little surprise pop of yellow right there maybe a little more of that surprise of magenta on that one needs to be lightened up though so it's going to get a pop of yellow on here too that's a bit of white Oh, there we go. There we go. All right. A little bit more contrast down here in the foreground. I'm just going to take some of that blue and the purple together with a little bit of yellow. Trying to not add any white to this bit in the front. So that is not as dark as I want it to be yet. So we're going to add more, more of that Prussian blue to it. Just getting that little bit of color, shape, form. There we go. Now that's starting to get more. It's starting to get more. And now something that I'm noticing on this one is that it really needs to have like a glaze of just, just a tiny bit of kind of a grayed out tone. Not really gray though. So I need to pick up maybe a little bit of the magenta, a little bit of that green. There we go. I think that'll be good. Now, I'm washing my brush out. I'm taking just a tiny touch. I'm going to just take this over it. I just want to soften it a little bit and desaturate it just a little because I want to push it back. I don't want it to be quite, quite so forward. So this is a this is a test. This is a an experiment. I did end up putting him a lot closer. So I've got it grayed down a little bit. What I'm going to do is bring this one brighter. The middle one is going to become a brighter tone. 
yellow. White. More, more white and yellow. There, oh, there we go. And if I'm doing that, I'm gonna have to bring this one farther forward. So you're getting to see how I adjust, how I modify as I'm going along to make the painting feel more of what I want it to feel like. So we're The paint wasn't dry all the way, so I was able to sort of mush it around. That one needs to go darker, that little one in the back. Yeah, I know, I love that little mushroom. He was so cute. And if the whole painting had been just about that little mushroom, I would not have done this. But because I want this to feel like it's farther back, he needs to be less in the light. I'm not gonna lose everything. I'm gonna wipe back just a little bit. Bring a little bit more light forward on that one on the middle one i'm trying to say which which one i'm on but oh my gosh it is hard you know, when you're talking and painting at the same time it's very difficult to to maintain a a you know strong banter i guess uh, there it is. That was my heat tool just hit the floor. Wow. This painting is really taking a long time. So I hope that you are, you know, enjoying the process with me. I'm going to pull that in front of it. There. Just make it into the painting you want it to be. It's just waiting for you to find it. It's just waiting there. A little bit of that right there. A little bit of dark. When you mix the burnt sienna and the Prussian blue together, you get an almost black. Prussian blue does have a bit of a black to it, so. So that's why you can make, you know, real pretty grays really fast with Prussian blue. Red in. Bring some of the magenta in. Now I'm working at this very flat away from me so that I wasn't, um, 
so that it gave you a better view. We'll put a little bit more red, a little more magenta. Like that. That's cool. A little bit of white. I'm going to soften that white up. I'm going to come up here and make a little bit more brown on the top. And bring it around and it's going to be a little darker on this side. Now this brush probably is a little bit soft for what I'm doing, but you know, you can make any brush work. So don't, don't worry if you don't have expensive brushes. I'm not using an expensive brush. I think it's better to use the brush you have than sit there and worry about having the perfect one. That way you, you don't feel as precious about learning what the brush can do and you don't feel so upset if you're you know testing your brush and pushing it you know pushing against it or to see what marks what marks it will make and you know yes brushes will last a lot longer if you're very careful but where's the fun <laughs> where's the fun in that Oh, don't always be careful when you're painting. Have fun. There, a little bit up here. A little bit of a brighter tone. Wow, I guess that was the... Let's see here. I want a bit of that here. Coming around. A little bit of that down here on the stem. Or the base. I don't really know much about mushrooms. I know that they're cute. I know I like to paint them, but you know, I am not a forager. I would not trust knowing unless I had somebody with me who was a forager going out and getting mushrooms and eating wild plants, you know? We have a colony of mushrooms that comes back every November, October, November. And I've heard that they might be, you know, edible, but mm, not going to test it. Not going to test. Unless somebody knows, really knows mushrooms, comes over and says, oh yeah, those are perfectly fine. You can tell I'm I'm getting down to the the end of the painting here. I'm you know doing little little things to you know bring things out if I need to. Oh, that's a good little shadow on that mushroom. I'm going to put a bit of bit more green right in there. So I really want to make that one. Oh, look at that. Boom. Boom bitty boom. I love this paint. I love 
getting the chance to share my creativity with you. I hope you'll share your creativity with me. I am on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. So just at Deliberately Creative. Check me out. Tag me. If you do any of the paintings from my lessons, go ahead and tag me so that way I can come and say hi. See, there's enough dark in there now that I need to bring a little bit more light. Maybe even. I don't want to do too much with the white, but a little bit of light on these. Just sort of sparks it up. Just spark it up. Oh, that's cute. All right. I am going to put one more little highlight. Kind of right here. And brighter highlight right up there. And over here. Little edge coming around. A little more brown right in here. Darken it up just a smidge. Give it a little bit of some texture. Just tap, tap, tap. Not, not worried about making it perfect. Just about having fun. There we go. All right. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends. I'm going to sign this. Let's see. I guess I'll just take some white and blue and make it kind of a whitish gray. Just put my my little glyph on here. There we go. I hope you enjoyed this magical painting. Remember, go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. And I want to see you back here again for another magical painting. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.